Paula Malcolmson, uh, you just finished up the fourth season of Ray Donovan, and you're going into the fifth. So you guys are kind of in that sweet spot that uh, long-running series are getting into, where uh, everything's starting to gel just right. What is the what was the experience of going into season four like? What were some of the expectations that you guys had? Well, I think you know you just have to up the stakes, don't you, mm-hmm. on a show like this? So we wanted to, you know just sort of more galvanized, more exciting, also really concentrate for season four on the family dynamics on the show, which we feel like is a really sort of huge factor that we had really just barely started to scratch the surface with, using the family to really tether these kind of pulpier situations. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, speaking of family, I mean, your character, Abby, uh, the wife of uh, Ray Donovan goes through a lot in this season. Uh, most uh, uh, importantly, I guess, a cancer diagnosis. Talk a little bit about the uh, changes that Abby undergoes this season. Well, um, you see, now we're in season five, so that's sort of what I'm focusing on. So I'm <laughs> trying to pass my memory back to season four, which was over a year ago. Um, yeah, so she, yeah, she's diagnosed with with uh, stage zero breast cancer and has to decide how to um, proceed with that diagnosis, given that it's a very tricky diagnosis in terms of um, what treatment is the right treatment, if any treatment at all. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that was something that uh, we haven't seen a lot because it's a, it's a sort of a newer, I, I think these kind of terms, zero, stage zero breast cancer, stuff like that. It's, it's all kind of new to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So going on with that and, and, and how Ray felt about it, how she felt about it, how she wanted autonomy of her own body um, while her family are, you know, have other demands on her and, and everything else. Right. Uh, to prepare for that, I mean, did you do any kind of research or were there personal experiences that you were able to bring uh, to uh, those episodes. How did you uh, find your way into uh, playing a character dealing with that kind of serious uh, predicament? Yeah, I think, well, the idea of cancer, sort of the bigger picture of cancer is probably something that everybody has gone has gone through to some degree, family, mm-hmm. friends, loved ones. And so there's that bigger aspect of sort of what your initial fears of what is cancer um and it's a bastard of a disease um and seems to affect a lot more people than it should but uh so i did so so i had my own personal um relationships with that and then actually our our head writer david hollander his wife had actually been diagnosed with this very cancer which i think was um spurred on the storyline wanting to tell this story. So we talked a lot about that and talked to his wife and, and what she was going through. Well, well I hope she's all right. Uh, yeah, she's doing great. That's good yeah. to hear. Yeah. Um, so then what were, um, I guess, particularly difficult moments for you to play? I mean, were there anything that, that stands out in your mind as being like, um, you say, oh boy, I, I hope I get this right. It's, it's, I mean, this sort of continues on. I think particularly as a woman, you have these responsibilities to play the complexity and the nuance of, of, of women. And uh, that's always a responsibility in your work. And then added to that is something as important as cancer and wanting to do it really, really right. Wanting to, you know, walk that line also with trying to work with the writers to find out what they want to do and of course you know television is full of mysteries it's not a film where your course is charted there's no a to b um in tv it's a circuitous path you know the the writers come in with a with an idea in season one and then the actors will inform that and something that happens on set might further inform it so it was hard to know we were go- where we were going to end up with this. So that was some of the some of the um, things that I really wanted to get right. Really wanted to try and understand and really encourage the writers to share with share with me as much as possible what they knew 
where the storyline was going to go and why they were using this storyline to jeopardize the character um, and to sort of add to add tension to make Ray feel you know to, to to show us what it would be like without her you know to sort of have that have that jeopardy in this character right and it's interesting too because of mortality uh, it, well, it hangs throughout all of Ray Donovan, obviously, but uh, with your character this year, uh, it's there not only in the form of your cancer, but in a moment where you kill a man, actually, to save Ray's life. Can you talk a bit about that? Yeah, well, I think, I think the thing is, too, that, you know, they were working with the idea that Ray can fix many things, but his family, he, you know, this is, this is where he is not you know his powers only go to to such a length you know um and yeah so i think that i think this season was a lot about seeing abby kind of step up seeing her what she'll do for this family i mean we've seen sort of her standing by her man um putting up with his bullshit, all this sort of thing but then you know upping the stakes to where she she actually yeah she an intruder calls and, and she shoots him. Mm -hmm. And I mean, throughout this season, like you said, you're, you're seeing what Abby will do for the family. Um, you know, there's a lot of great lengths that you go through um, uh, to protect the family from oncoming threats. Can you talk a bit about that? I think, yeah, I think we want, you know, we really wanted to show that, you know, she's not just this, I mean, she is a, a, a stay at home mom, which is a lot. Um, but you know, the kids are getting older now and it's sort of, we wanted to, we wanted to show Abby's agency in her own life. Um, you know, what she wants and, but yeah, the, these threats are coming in and we sort of entered into this. I think we leave the season with Abby saying, uh, you know, where Ray is having tremendous doubts. He's going through another sort of dark night of the soul and believes he's probably going to wind up in the witness protection program that they're going to have to move to ohio and she said you know we're gonna if, if we're gonna we're gonna beat this and then at the very end she said you know don't doubt me because i told you so i mean the idea that she even when he doesn't believe in himself that she does she has faith in this family unit this is her you know, chosen family. She has a family of origin that she's left behind. And uh, this is, you know, this is her North Star. What's interesting with your character is that uh, from the beginning, um, you sort of uh, define uh, expectations of what the long suffering wife will be. Certainly, um, she stands by him through infidelities and, and everything else. Uh, why do you think Abby sticks with Ray? for so long? I think I'm asked this question constantly by people and often with indignation. <laughs> I'll be sort of trapped in an elevator with, with, with men and women saying, why are you with him? Why don't... <laughs> so I've had to ask myself, you know, I, I don't know that I, Paula, would have stayed with a man like this, but I think they are, they've known each other since they were children. This, he is her, I mean, it's, it's sort of, this family is a sort of completely organizing principle in her life. You know, without the Donovans, she, I mean, she is truly a Donovan. And I feel, I feel like she's, she's, she's probably thought about it. She's tried other things. We've seen that she's sort of had her own dalliance and, and, she sort of asked that man to make certain sacrifices for her and he couldn't do what Ray can do. And this is what we come back to. It's that sort of, uh, you know, the charisma and the, and the, um, it's almost like a, an addict being with an addict or a ga you know, gambler, or, you know, there's all this great stuff and there's all this terrible stuff. And I think it's sort of the highs and the lows, you know, life isn't exactly medium in for her, you know, with this man. I think there's something about that. 
Well, so much of it depends on the uh, chemistry between you and Leo Schreiber. What is that uh, relationship like between the two of you on set? I think we're, you know, we're very um, different kinds of actors. And Leo's a very physical actor. He's, you know, you know, all these stunts that he does, he's very facile physically. And I'm a, sort of a much more, and, he, and, he's, and he's quite a literal thing thinker and I am a much more intuitive gut instinct kind of actor it's a really really nice combination and I just think that sort of you know she's very much a woman and he's very much a man um I, I guess these are archetypes but yes I think that I think it's a just a very nice balance that we're able to to bring to we sort of make up for each other's uh what we're what we're missing you know Right, and it's interesting this season, you kind of touched on this earlier, but um, uh, your, your roles are a little bit switched this year, in a sense, because of your cancer diagnosis. You see him becoming vulnerable, and uh, you are becoming a bit stronger throughout the course of the season, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think, we, you know, I think that's something that when you have a, a storyline, it's a, you know, an anti-hero, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's a t playing the wife is a tough role, very, it can be a thankless role and, and, you know, you see it in films all the time and, and, and it, and it can become sometimes even grating for an audience mm -hmm. because She's always standing, coming in from the shadows, asking where he's been, what's, you know, what's going on, who are you? And I think we just got really tired of that, you know, construct and wanted to just sort of flip it on its head, you know, and just sh and show her a little bit more, show the, show the rest of the family a bit more, you know, that because the wife can also, oftentimes become the antagonist or it's set up that way, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and nobody wants to watch that for five years, and I certainly don't want to play it for five years, you know. So anyway, I hope we're, I hope we're showing a lot more of her, her nuance and, and her character, and we're trying to do that as best we can. Absolutely. Uh, going off of that, what were some of the highlights from season four, uh, maybe a particular episode that you thought really uh, uh, showed off Abby's dimensions in a new way? I mean, I think, I think it's sort of, you're, I'm constantly trying to mine for those things, you know, even if on the page it says, you know, she's, she's sort of in his face again about, you know, I'm sort of constantly trying to find the reasons that she does that. I did think the episode where, you know, she's, it's Bridget's 18th birthday, you know, she, she goes outside, she sees Bridget in the car having sex with an older man and coming back to bed and all the excitement about their life and, 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 and how far they've come and all these 20 something years together. And then she, Ray goes downstairs, they think it's Bridget and she has to shoot a guy and she shoots him in the head. So she's a pretty good shot <laughs> <laughs> while he's tussling with her husband. Yeah. yeah. But I think that, and then showing sort of them, them kind of having to leave and, and what she's prepared to do. Um, and just the, I think there was also a lovely scene where she talks to Mickey about how, when she and Ray met, you know, when they met and, 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 he, and, he, and, 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 and she sort of gets to the very heart of who he is, this sort of romantic, but it, but incapable of showing that, you know, I think he, he said, this is as good as it's ever going to be, you know, and that, w and she was sort of hooked and there's a kind of poetry in that. I thought that was really beautiful. Right. Now, as you mentioned, you guys are uh, in the middle of season five right now. Yeah. Um, I, I don't want to, don't want you to give away too much, but I wonder uh, what can we expect from this upcoming season. Well, it's a it's a it's a it's a very different season than we've ever had. We're jumping time a lot, so we start off um, 
And I really will spill the beans if I tell you almost anything. So <laughs> we, we start off and we know exactly what's going down immediately. And then we start jumping in and out of linear time um, okay. into flashbacks. We see them before and after and big events occur. And it's a really, really strange, odd season and a big, big season for Abby. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I look forward to seeing it. Uh, Paula Malcolmson, thank you so much. Congratulations on uh, season four of uh, Ray Donovan. And it was a pleasure talking with you. Lovely to talk to you too. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Have a good day.